Exponential functions. This is another type of function that we work with in Algebra 2. Exponential functions are functions that are used when we have repeated multiplication or a constant multiplier. This might sound similar to linear functions when we had a constant value added over and over again, which was our slope. Now instead of adding over and over again, we're going to multiply over and over again, which is what creates the exponential function. Now, don't get too excited about these exponential functions. They are actually quite simple. They are written in the form f of x equals a times b to the x, where a is the starting point when x is equal to 0. And then it is multiplied by something over and over again. b is that multiplier that we're multiplying. And the variable x is how many times we do that multiplication. So for example, if I want to write an equation that goes through 0, 3 and 3, 24, here x is equal to 0, so 3 is my starting point. So I know my starting point is a. So let's just use y for the f of x for now. We've got y equals my starting point, which is 3 times b to the x. In order to figure out what b is, what my multiplier is, we can use the other point where 3 is the x and 24 is the y. So replacing the y with 24 equals 3b to the x power. And so we're going to plug a 3 into that. And if we divide both sides by 3, we get b cubed equals 8. And what to the third power is equal to 8? What times itself 3 times? Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. So b must be equal to 2. And that gives us our function. Our function is f of x equals a, my starting point, 3, times b, my multiplier, which is 2, raised to the x power. This is the function that goes through the point 0, 3, and 3, 24, and is an exponential function. Often we use exponential functions with percentage growth or percentage decay. So just as an example, if we have a percentage growth, that growth is our b, our multiplier. Remember, it's f of x equals a times b to the x. a is what we start with, and then we've got a multiplier. That multiplier with percentages always has to be 1 plus that percentage. So for 5% growth, that's going to be 1 plus 5% as a decimal is 0 0.05. Or you could just write it as 1.05. So with a percent growth, we have to start with 1 plus whatever percentage grows. Very similar with percentage decay or percentage decrease. It's always going to be 1 minus that percentage decrease. So a 2% decrease would be 1 minus the 2% as a decimal 0.02. Or you could just write that as 0.98. With percentages increase or decrease, we always have to start with that 1 and then adjust for the increase or decrease. So for example, if we've got a town in 2010 had a population of 20,683, and the population is growing 4.36% each year, we can make an equation and figure out what the population will be in 2016. And here's a nice little tip. We're going to say 2010 is the zero point. So that means we started with 20,683. And if you remember that function, f of x equals a times b to the x, a is the starting value. So we already know our a. The 4.36% is our b, but because it's a percent, we have to start with 1. It grew, so 1 plus. 4.36% as a decimal is 0. 0.0436. So our b is 1.0436. So we have our starting point. We have our b, which we got from the percentage, always 1 plus the growth. So our function f of t, we'll say t because it's time passing, 
is the starting point 20,683 times b, which is 1.0436 raised to the t power, however much time goes by. Well, that's not actually answering the question. The question wanted to know, what's the population in 2016? 2016 is six years after our base year, so t is equal to 6. So f of t is equal to, actually, f of 6, because we went six years later, is equal to 20,683 times 1.0436 raised to the sixth power. So we go to our calculator and just basically type this in. 20,683 times 1.0436 raised to the sixth power. And we get 26,700. And we'll round it to the nearest person, 19 people. Now we have the new population of our town by building an exponential equation by identifying the starting point and the multiplier based on the percent. Now we have actually worked with exponential equations a little bit in Algebra 1. We actually solved exponential equations without a calculator by getting the same base on each side of the equation. And then we could set those exponents equal. We had a couple tricks that helped us. First, negative exponents created fractions. So if we had 1 half, that would be equal to 2 to the negative 1. Negative exponents create fractions. We also know that exponents on exponents are multiplied. So if I have 3 squared and that's all raised to the fifth power, we can multiply those exponents and we have 3 to the tenth power. So here's three problems we might have seen in Algebra 1. These are exponential equations because the variable is in the exponent. Let's see if we can solve them by getting a common base on both sides. We've got 25 to the x equals 125. We can rewrite 25 as an exponent. 25 is 5 to the second power, and it still has the x on it. 125 also can be rewritten as 5 to the third power. Now we can use our exponent properties to multiply them together. So we have 5 to the 2x is equal to 5 to the third. And then we can see quite quickly that the exponents must be equal because the bases are equal. 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by 2, and x is 3 halves. Similarly, on the second example, 1 9th to the 2x equals 27. 9 can be rewritten as 3 squared. And to get the fraction, it has to be a negative exponent with 2x on top of it. And 27 can be rewritten as 3 to the third power. Same idea, we can multiply those exponents together. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x equals 3 to the third power. And again, we've got the same base, so the exponents must be equal. Negative 4x equals 3. Divide by negative 4, and we have x is equal to negative 3 fourths. This should be largely review, but one more just because we're getting so good at practicing. 16 to the x plus 3. 16 is 4 squared. We could have also made it 2 to the third, 2 to the fourth power with x plus 3 outside. But we can get the 64 to be 4 cubed. Since we have the same base on both sides, we're going to be OK with this. We have to multiply the exponents, but you'll remember from Algebra 1 that we have to distribute that 2 onto the entire thing. So we have 4 to the 2x plus 6 equals 4 to the third power. Same base, so the exponents must be equal. 2x plus 6 equals 3. 
and we should be really good at solving these two-step equations by now. Subtracting 6, 2x equals negative 3, dividing by 2, and x equals negative 3 halves. So you'll see a few of these solving exponential equations on your homework assignment today. Also, you'll be able to work with building exponential functions. What's the starting point? How do you find the multiplier? And doing some applications with percentages as well. Take a look at the homework, playing with and getting used to these exponential functions, and let your instructor know if you have any questions.